actually building your confidence. For other people, it's reminding yourself of the consequences. What are the losses? What's the impact? Or other people are just don't think, just do. Maybe you've tried the whole benefits and consequences and it just didn't work. So it might be just get out of bed and just do it. So we're going to keep thinking how that works. So you can see that you are successful in changing how the mindset. Because the biggest thing that I see a lot is when a strategy doesn't work, who do you blame? Yourself. Now, as Dr. Phil says, how's that working for you? <laughs> when you blame yourself, does it really give us any chance of being successful? Absolutely no way. So human beings never fail. It's the strategy that fails. And in this context today, it's all about your mindset. We're going to talk about effective goal setting in a few weeks. And so for other um, barriers, it might be family situation. Maybe your expectations are too high, as you said before. But today, it's all about your thinking. So whenever you blame yourself, always sit back and think, it's not me that's failed. I've actually got the wrong strategy. Maybe I wasn't thinking the right way. Or maybe I haven't got the right way. Does that make sense? So always think like that. And always think back to your confidence. So throughout the challenge, when you're doing your exercise, when you're actually working on the nutrition, always go back to thinking, how confident am I I'm going to be successful? And if your confidence is low, you might have to go back to think, have I got the right frame of mind? Is my goal too, too big? Do I need to, to, to redo that? Is there any questions about that? Mm. So, about our thinking, we tend to be very irrational. Because sometimes you might have a little lapse, like, oh, I had half a packet of tin. I'm just wiping this out for years, so I don't know if this I've just had half a packet of biscuits, or I missed my ex exercise class again. What's the point in going on? We tend to interpret a little lapse into a full on relapse. Has anyone done that where they've just blown things out of proportion? So we tend to, as human beings, catastrophize situations. We probably would never do it to family or friends, but we tend to do it in our own backyard. So can you think of a point in time where you were thinking a certain way and you just blew it out of proportion? Can you give any examples? I've got too many of them. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone ever think that one small hiccup was the complete write-off? Has anyone ever thought, I blew it today, I'll start again next Monday? Monday. <laughs> Monday. Monday or next Monday? Monday I just... <laughs> Fresh page, Monday I just... Who has ever said that? <laughs> yeah, we've all said that. So, you know, if you've blown it on Monday afternoon and you think, I've blown it, I'll start again next Monday, and that's your thought, you're giving yourself the green light to do what for the rest of the week? There's lots of Mondays. <laughs> There's lots of Mondays. And from Tuesday to Sunday, you give yourself permission to sabotage the strategy. And even on a longer term, I reckon that'd apply for something like gets to September, and you go, I'll start in January. I'll start yeah. in the new year. So you're talking about three yeah. months of yeah. like, yeah. you know, yeah. yeah. So when we're talking about change, it goes back to our perception. And, and I see this time and time again. And I've asked people to close their mind. Oh, close, <laughs> close your eyes. And when I, when I mention the word diet or weight, what comes to your mind? What comes to your mind? And quite often, particularly women, I'll say restriction. They just go, oh, hard work. So no wonder, quite often we think, well, I've ruined it in September, I will start again January 2013. <laughs> so and I've had a conversation with a patient who called me in November and she said, oh, I've been told by the doctor to come and see you, but I'm, read, I'm thinking maybe January because, you know, stuff happens. I go, what do you mean? And, and she just had this whole idea that she had to have clear out the kitchen cupboards, have a fresh page to write a beautiful food diary, which never worked for her and had to be in the, in the diet mode. And we just got thinking and talk, we just got talking and she ended up coming in and seeing me. And the biggest goal for her in, um, at Christmas time was to enjoy herself, not to feel guilty, and just to be a bit more mindful about how much damage she was doing. Because quite often she would say, the diet's over, throw it out the window and just go to full on crazy business. So very black and white. So we talked about making small changes. So have to think about yourself. Do you sabotage yourself quite often and what would you need to do in order to change that? Can anyone relate to that? Yeah, it's really common. And so it always goes back to your confidence. You might be really confident in doing the challenge, but what's your confidence after doing the challenge? Have you raised the bar too high? Do you need to rejig it? Maybe you need to rejig the goal every week, because I don't know about you, but situations change every week. Weather, family, work, stress, whatever. 
So you're the decision maker, and the best thing to think about is the right way of thinking, and therefore what you can do about it. Any comments about that? Does that sort of make sense? Yeah, we never got taught that at university. We just left university and, and were told um, we got this on camera, but we don't <laughs> show anyone else. But we, we got um, taught how to tell people what to eat. But that's, that's all it was. So what happened? Well, you tell me. If I had seen a person, a patient, um, let's say it's for weight loss, loss or energy management, or I done a group like this, and we worked on some changes and life got in the way and they didn't achieve what they were setting out to achieve, what do you think that person would have done after? Would they have come back to the next consult? No. What would they be thinking? Failure. I've, I've failed that lovely health professional. I, I couldn't show my face in the group because everyone else is successful. So it goes back to what you were saying this morning. So the main thing to think about is you need to have a thinking strategy for any behavioural change, whether it is parenting, work or health. Um, and the last thing to think about is you as a failure. That's, that's definitely not true. You just got to you know, re, um, rejig the way you think. Which brings me to my next point. So I'm going to get you to have a crack at it. Hand this out. While I'm handing this out, has anyone got any questions or would you like me to walk through your particular scenario? I'm going to get you to do it personally because sometimes people don't like to share it. But any sort of um, questions or any um, comments about what you don't need? So what I want you to do is to think of, because the thing is, as I said before, we are not very rational with how we think. Yeah, quite often um, we're not very rational or systematic in how we think. We may be very systematic in following the meal plan and going out and doing your exercise, but quite often at the last minute, you think you can get in the way. So I'm going to actually get you to think of um, this, but because as I said before, while you do need a behavioural plan for Gary's classes, you may actually put it in your iPhone as a reminder. You may have your shopping list to remind yourself of what to buy. The thing that can get you getting away at the last minute is that you can talk yourself out of it. Has anyone ever had a beautiful plan at the last minute and talk yourself out of it? So that's why you need a plan on how to think and a plan on what to do. So when you form there, I want you to think of a point in time, this is a way of being very systematic about it, I want you to think of a point in time when you know you talk yourself out of taking action. So I'll give you a few examples. It might be, will I, won't I buy takeaway on the way home this afternoon? Will I, won't I go and have an extra biscuit with that cup of tea? Is it if you're deciding to go and exercise or not? Is it, do I actually react to what I see on the scales? So if anyone's weighed themselves and it's not what you expect and you've been flogging yourself all week, that's a decision. Will I blow it because I've just seen not a very nice number or will I actually think of something different? So think of a point in time when you know that you talk yourself out of it, taking action. Has everyone got an idea? It might be if you're thinking about going and eating more, if it is going and exercising, is it will I actually react to what I see on the scales? Have to think about it. And sometimes you might have to go back in time and pull actually forward to see what the consequences are to go back and really think of a point in time when you know you really talk yourself in or out of taking action. So can anyone think of one point in time? Yep. Five,